Welcome back to 365 Unlimited. See, the boys are already having a good time. We are back in the building. It's been a minute. Laughter is everywhere. We're just going to continue to rock with this one. NFL draft, NFL offseason, all of it's been fun. Uh, but Carter Gannon and myself haven't really had the chance to sit down um, and discuss those key items, discuss our favorite teams um, and what's ahead as far as the NFL draft and even the flurry of uh, potential free agency signings post-draft, uh, trades that could happen during the draft. I know there's some fireworks that haven't been set off yet as far as the NFL offseason goes. Uh, so let's just open this one up immediately. Gannon, I'll pass the mic to you. Talk to me about the offseason of the Green Bay Packers so far, what you've liked, what you don't like, and what you expect. Yeah, man, the free agency, the initial um, period back in March when it first happened was crazy. The motion signing Josh Jacobs, having, you know, probably the best backfield, I think, with Aaron Jones and him and company. And then two hours later, boom, get rid of him. Aaron Jones become a Viking. That was a lot of emotions, a lot of stuff. All in that same day, Xavier McKinney becoming a Packer, 24. I think Jacobs is 26, going on 27. Another two young additions to the core. Both established guys, both from out of Bama, good program. So I, it's fun for me. It's exciting. Um, I think the offense is really uh, going to be ready to go on those aspects of things. We'll see kind of come to draft. I think we still need a little bit of free agency help with some veteran wide receivers to kind of come in and mold these young guys a little bit more. But I really like the Xavier McKinney signing. I think the guy has been one of the best safeties in football, and he's only 24. He's got a lot of experience already underneath his belt for a young guy. I'm really looking to add some more bolster, some more to the secondary with the Packers coming to the draft coming this next week. We really need some help with the secondary on that aspect. But it's fun, man. It's fun to have some intriguing moves, something active. The Packers never been one to really have a whole lot of buzz going around the free agency time, but it's fun. Goot, the GM and company have really done a lot to improve the Packers roster, and you know they've done a lot of turnover. The last four to five years, there's really not the same roster there. So I really like the avenues they're going there. I think um, – we know how Jerry and the Dallas boys, that they don't really do a whole lot in the free agency window of stuff that Bryce has kind of expected it to be, being a Cowboys fan here. So I don't no. think he's got a whole lot to say with the free agency noise, but it was a lot of wild stuff. I think Carter's got a good little segment here being a Bears guy with his take with Justin Fields, kind of becoming a Pittsburgh Steeler and some other moves they got. What do you got, Carter? Yeah, man, I, uh, I, I think I was shocked like most people. Like, I think we were... I was still kind of holding out on the idea of actually taking Caleb Williams just because as a Bear fan, you it never really goes how it's supposed to go as a Bears fan. So I was still like holding on to that little bit of like, they're not going to do it. And then I was a little shocked at how little they did get for Fields. I think it was all timing. I don't think it was necessarily Fields doesn't have the talent. I think it was the timing. I think they waited too long for Fields. Like, if I think they should have got rid of him. If they knew this was happening, they should have got rid of him last year. I really do. I think they would have got a lot more for him than a sixth round, possibly a fourth round, depending on – really depending on how Russ plays. Um, as far as that goes, I think we're at A, I think we're at a rated in the – in the, in, the, in the agent free agency, I really liked the Swift pickup. I was hoping, I really liked Josh Jacobs. I was kind of upset the Packers got him, honestly. I know he's a little bit older. I know he does deal with some injuries. I know Swift does as well. But I think what's really good for the Bears having Swift is now we can actually, for the first time since I've ever, maybe Tariq Cohen, his little stretch, but we've had where we have – a running, a running, a running pound guy like Roshan and uh, Herbert, yeah. and then offsetting it with a, a speedy guy that can catch out of the backfield, that can run the ball. We haven't had a duo like the Bears running backs. We always have good running backs every year, but it's just downhill. You look at Montgomery. You look at Matt Forte. You look at all these guys. They're pretty much. That's a good point. Runners. That is a good point. Yeah. And we, we got haven't a had a guy like now. this. No, yeah. other than Tariq Cohen. Um, a little bit different. I mean, he's more hurt. I mean, he's a little bit different, but Swiss having Army someone knife. like Swift is going to be huge. Obviously, the Keenan Allen. I love the pickup. I know he's old, you know, older. He deals with some injuries, but having him and DJ Moore, I think, is going to be nasty combo. I mean, yeah. look at what DJ Moore did yeah. with Darnell Mooney not even – I mean, he was non-existent. Now, you can blame that on 
on fields or the the offensive coordinator, how they drew up plays. You can blame it on whatever, but it was pretty much DJ Moore, and that was it. Adding him, who has been a top five receiver in his career before, I think that adds huge value to the Bears. I think offense is pretty much set. That leads me into kind of obviously Caleb Williams is going to be the first pick. Although I did have a dream. Did I tell you about my dream? Mm-mm. Oh, Here we it. go. Was it Drake May? It was Drake May, dude. I, I swear <laughs> I, to that God. That would be PTSD. That wouldn't be a dream. That's that's Bears PTSD. No, I swear to God, I had a dream that the Bears took Drake May. That's PTSD, brother. It was weird, dude. I woke up like, what the hell? I don't think that's going to happen. I think we're going to no. take Caleb Williams. You, you I hope, think that's hope pretty much a given. The nine selection for me is where it gets tricky because – It's going to get messy at nine. It's, do it's you trade going. it back? Yeah. Do you take a receiver? Do you take an end? Because I think that's the one thing that we need is we need someone that can kind of match sweat. And there's some really good rush, you know, some ends in this draft. Whether it's Dallas Turner, I think his name is, and then uh, yeah. that Verde – the other guy, I forget. Verse. 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 Yeah. Um, no, I think the Bears did great. I'm just worried for draft night a little bit just because, not for one, because I think it's clear cut. I don't think there's any debate there. It's just what do we do at nine? Like, do yeah. we need another receiver right now? Should we take an offensive lineman? Because we know we need an offensive you know, we have a, de- a decent offensive line. We signed a few guys free agency wise, but I don't know. That's yeah, no, why, I, as a Bears fan, you just. I, I think night, some of it's going to be kind of how those first eight picks kind of fall in line before you, too. Like Bryce said, it's going to become a mess around the ninth pick because then I think gonna, some of the cards, because some of the cards are going to be dealt in, because then do you get more yeah. capital and, you know, battle well, back unless somebody that needs to trade up and get somebody that wants somebody there, too? I think it's kind of going to. Yeah, gonna and I think it's going to get messy. What I mean by messy is, honestly, quarterbacks are going to fly off the board, obviously. Um, and then you have your stud three receivers. Uh, you have your Marvin Harrison, your Adunze, your Malik Neighbors. Those three receivers can easily all three go in the top ten. And uh, when you already mark it down where you got Caleb Williams, Drake May, Jaden Daniels, possibly J.J. McCarthy, that's four quarterbacks, three receivers. That could be your seven out of ten. Yeah picks immediately right you're gonna have to throw in one offensive lineman in there there's a possibility i mean joe alt from notre dame is probably gonna go in the top 10 that's a team they've talked a lot about the los angeles chargers being a team that with with it being harbaugh's first year kind of kind of you know trying to mold that offensive line and, and build uh build it around uh obviously your franchise quarterback and herbert uh it's they're kind of in the middle right now like it's a team who struggled but they have weapons there still as far as talent goes obviously dealing out and letting go of your two best receivers who have been your foundational pieces with some injury history there so that will have to get solved so i mean realistically their number one option they should be attacking is receiver but you think the I, bears no i'm talking chargers, You're talking I'm, chargers. I'm talking chargers just the way that first top 10 could fall well no they don't have keenan allen i don't think they have mike williams no mike no. williams is gone too he's no, all they have is quentin Scott johnson with. yeah you need to have yeah. a young star. you don't, don't even have everett yeah they got to get another piece and but this receiver class and this class in in general as far as um talent goes is relatively i mean first through the first through the uh, third round are rounds where you can get quality talent. So yeah. if they want to attack the offensive line position, they could go with a Joe Alt, trade down possibly from five, accumulate an additional yeah. pick. If a team gets aggressive for a quarterback, yeah. I believe Los Angeles is sitting at number five. So I that, can see them being a trade down spot there with Minnesota yeah. getting up into the mix. It's a perfect, 100%. perfect trade down. Because then you could be in the early teens pick and still getting a high end wide receiver if that quarterback frenzy does go, like you said. I've even seen, I saw, I saw something where the Bears, they take obviously Caleb Williams and then nine, they take a an edge, and then I saw, I don't know if it was second because I know, I don't know what number, but us taking Roman Wilson from Michigan. Yeah, receiver, which honestly, having a speedy guy, a smaller speedy guy like that, offsetting obviously DJ Moore and Keenan Allen, who are bigger receivers, 
I wouldn't mind that. I mean, I think our offense is going to be stacked. I mean, now is it going to pan out the way Bears fans want it to? I don't know. I mean, you have a rookie quarterback. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it's yeah, up in the I, air. I, I, that's That was one of the other talking points we were getting some more drafts. If I want to ask Carter and just the rest of Bears Nation, because it's tough, man, having those expectations, especially having Caleb Williams, you know, pretty much penciled in with you guys there. It, what is it kind of going into year one? Being a Bears fan, you know, you, you got realistic expectations. You know this isn't still going to be smooth regardless of the talent level of Caleb Williams. There's still got to be a patient level there. I said that back on a while with Jordan Love, and that was in his fourth year play. And, like, just the expectations level there is going to be crazy with Chicago, kind of how they embrace him and all that. But you also got to be realistic at the same time. Yeah. I don't think Bears fans are going to be realistic. No, no, I and think... I know that, but I'm just talking more to your les because well, you, the expectations you get, are you, you already get outrageous. The yeah, expectations. Exactly. I mean, but I'm talking to an actual Bears fan that gets it, like, because you still there's a lot of moving pieces, but it's hard to make that all work in one year, let alone a rookie guy at the helm. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of Bear fans are upset about the Fields trade, and most of them. I mean, I'm more okay with it than most yeah, i think and i get that on a loyalty level but for a pure town and trying to make your team better ryan poles is doing everything in his power to do that right now. and the reason i know the reason i brought that up is though is because that's where that that realistic expectation is going to come is because you got rid of fields which arguably people wanted they don't want caleb williams a lot of bears fans and so when that happens and you bring in a stud who's going to be you know the best quarterback in years, you know, coming to a franchise that never really has a good quarterback. I mean, you're going to have so many high expectations. Realistic expectations, I think, is to see that he can throw the ball. I think that's all that we want to see. I don't think, you know, in his in his interview, I don't know if it was at the Combine, I think it was – Colin Coward asked him, what don't you like doing or something like that? And he said, I don't like to run. And I like hearing that because I don't care what anybody says. You need to throw the ball to be a winning team. You have to throw the ball as a quarterback. Mm -hmm. We look at so many great great quarterbacks. They're all run. Their first thing is run. Look, look at Mahomes. How much does Mahomes run realistically anymore? We know his first couple years. He was out there. Josh Allen's out there. Jalen Hurts. These guys, but you can't win like that. You just can't. Just, you need to throw the ball, and that's yeah. what the Bears fans, as a Bears fan, we want to see him making pocket throws, yeah, it's a hitting people on the money, yeah. getting the ball downfield. Arguably, that was coaching, but I think that's a realistic expectation. We can't really ex- – I mean, it would be great to have – a C.J. Stroud type of, of year with Caleb Williams. I don't think that necessarily – I mean, he's walking into a great, great – I mean, I don't think – I can't think of a time recently, correct me if I'm wrong, where the number one quarterback drafted has been in this great of a position, honestly, with the team that's up there. Well, think about it, though, the – the the crazy part about that in itself is like a couple months ago, would you have been saying that? Like this is a this is a team that like one, Bears fans can be mad all they want about trading fields. It was the right decision. Clear cut, no brainer decision. Yeah. It's the right move to make. But o- not only did that occur, Ryan Poles attacked this offseason the best way possible. I mean, it wasn't just bringing in guys to spend money because they had money. It was attacking free agency to bring in the right guys. Legit needs, that, yeah. Yes, and, and they fit what polls and, and what that what that coaching staff needs. The only question mark I ever had about the Bears offseason, which I think, uh, I mean, obviously will get resolved throughout the season depending on uh, record-wise and how they perform when this team's fully assembled. But my question was like the coaching staff in general. It was like bringing back a guy like Eberflus who – Yes, the team improved at the back end of the season. The team's very young. The guys seem to rally around him. Seems like a good overall coach, right? But it's interesting to me that you're willing to move on from fields and bring that staff back. And I know you brought in 
you brought in a new OC, a quarterback coach, like the the revolving staff around your head coach was was replaced. It was replenished and you brought in new voices um, and new opinions. But overall, that was like the one question mark I had as far as bringing Flus back and having him kind of work with the rookie QB, especially being a defensive minded coach. Uh, hopefully, Waldron from Seattle, uh, the, the new OC in Chicago will be the guy that can kind of help uh, Williams a little bit. I know a lot of a lot of people were interested in Kingsbury going to Chicago initially before he took a job, just with his ties to to Lincoln Riley, his ties to Caleb Williams at USC. Uh, but overall, I think obviously we've talked about this already. I don't have much to say as as far as it goes with the Cowboys, but I'll get into it a little bit. But Caleb Williams is your pick at number one for Chicago, easily, no doubt, and it's a fantastic pick. I'm a huge fan of Caleb Williams, and I've said it to to everyone that I've talked ball with these last few weeks to months. But, like, we've talked about that number nine pick. I, honest to God, and we talk about trading down possibly with Chicago. We talk about them taking best edge rusher available, possibly offensive line. But I got a feeling, because, bro, (laughs) they already lack picks. They already lack picks. Yeah. So why not go up, get your stud quarterback at one, go up again, and get a guy like Marvin Harrison, Malik Neighbors, Adunze. I don't know how much you'll have to trade up for a guy like Adunze or Neighbors, but if you want to get greedy, go get Marvin Harrison. And Well, the question that I had, not to cut you off, but I think the most interesting yeah. pick in the first round, or in the, in the top ten for me, where I'm like, man, what do they do here, is the Patriots. That's the yeah. one pick where I'm like, what do you do? Do you go after a Jaden Daniels or do you get a Drake May or do you get a J.J. McCarthy or do you take a stud like Marvin Harrison? Because I think they have the three pick. Yeah, they it's got likely, a quarterback. It's they likely Washington quarterback. is going to take Jaden Daniels, I think. I don't know. I mean, I think that's another question mark too. Like, dude, we really don't know what's beyond one. Like, they've, they've tossed around Jaden Daniels. They've tossed around Drake May. And I don't. I have no clue what Washington is going to do, and yeah, I have no clue I, what New I England is going to do. Yeah, New England's I, tough, bro. Because what do you do? You don't have receivers at New England. <laughs> no, you don't. But do you have your quarterback? What's more important? Yeah. I mean, a generational yeah, I, talent. I mean, I hate throwing that word generational out there because well, we've seen guys like Marvin Harrison, but obviously who do not they going have to, now. Is it Brissett? Yeah, uh, they brought Brissett back. Obviously, they traded Mac Jones. You still got, I believe, they still have Zappy. So, I mean, it, Brissett's your guy. You're rolling into the year with Brissett, but do you like? Do you bank on? I mean, realistically, if you draft Marvin Harrison, your team's probably you'll win a couple games with Brissett next year because he's a quality option, and I think he's better than Mac Jones. Honestly, <laughs> um, you'll win a couple games next year, and then the question is, do you think you're going to be able to get your quarterback next off season? and still be able to get that Marvin Harrison at three. I don't know. I think that's another another trade-down candidate. If there's a team that really wants to come up and, and get Drake Mayer, Jaden Daniels, whoever's available based off Washington's pick, and say that New England's not in love with those QB prospects, which I just can't see a reality where they don't take a quarterback. And I think if Daniels goes to Washington, I think May will end up in New England. I just yeah. Drake May is a New England quarterback. Yeah. It, it just I see seems... JJ a New England quarterback too. Honestly, I think JJ's going to Minnesota, man. I think he's a Viking. It, it just you look at any team outside that top ten to trade up and get a quarterback. Obviously, they're sitting at eleven, but them getting that other first round pick, um, no, first round or second round, they got somebody else to leverage to kind of move up. Who Minnesota? Just, they got two firsts yeah. now, I believe. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. The other first. So they got that with some leverage. They need a guy, man. You got to go get a damn quarterback when you have Justin Jefferson. Like it's just, it's a have to. If like, you want to keep him, it has to. Yeah, exactly. To if you want to have any momentum and have him kind of stay to be the face of your guy, you got to have a young guy that you want to work with and have some buzz around a franchise. Could it's the just Bears very- jump though? Could I mean, could they realistically bounce off with Carlson? Said, is there a snowball's chance in hell? They're gonna they jump. trade they're up gonna, and get Marvin go Harrison. Up. If it's not uh, Harrison, it's see, a dunes or neighbors, dude. They're going yeah, up. I, I think it would be something to get up a, a couple picks ahead because jumping up to get Harrison, dude, I don't think they got the draft capital for that. In my opinion. That's the tough oh. part. But it's, 
Uh, and it is all dependent upon what goes on with these quarterbacks. Because, like I said, it could be seven. Seven out of your top ten could be receiver-quarterback combinations going. And then we talk one offensive lineman. That's your eight out of ten pick. So if you want one of those three studs out of the receiver class, like you're going to have to move up. And granted, the thing that's worrisome is like if you're a Bears fan, you could find – you could probably find a quality option at receiver later on in the draft because I know after you pick, First first round, do you guys – I don't even know if you have a two. Do you have a two? I don't yeah, think really so. So, I mean, My, after – I think we need – where we need off, – I, I think offensive line, it's not sexy. It's not a, a big pick like a quarterback or a, a top ten receiver, but it's the most important part of your offense. I'm glad and you're seeing that because the Bears have lacked that forever. The Bears have always lacked it, and look what we did. I really like Darnell Wright. I think he yeah, he's your foundational really tackle. He's your yeah. foundational guy. So that's what I'm saying. It's like you have two options, three options, realistically, if you're Chicago. You can trade up if you want to go get a receiver or if for some odd reason Joe Alt's available and you're in love with him. Yeah. So you're probably going to go receiver or a guy like Alt if you trade up. If you trade down, you're probably either going edge rusher or offensive lineman. If you sit and pick, you're probably going edge rusher or offensive lineman. Or you get lucky and a guy like Neighbors or a Dunze slides to nine. So that's where it gets interesting for me. It's like the Bears have, with the quarterback movement and, and sitting at number nine, and if a guy like McCarthy somehow is still available, which yeah. I doubt it, I think he'll go in the top eight. But the Bears have the ability. They could almost trade down twice in this first round if they wanted we to. Have, so we have two first rounders, one third, and one fourth. I didn't think they had a second. So that's the thing. If you if you trade down once, you're going to collect some ammo. You'll be all right throughout the draft. But you trade down twice, you could really collect some ammo yeah. and still get a mid-round receiver who's your wide receiver three this year. And after Allen moves on from Chicago with his age, he becomes your two. Pair him alongside DJ Moore. You get your foundational piece on the offensive line. Or you pair someone next to Montez Sweat mm -hmm. with your second first-round pick. I, I mean, there's so many avenues, dude. It's gonna get it's gonna get wild come draft night. Like, there's so many things that could happen. I mean, we talk about we haven't even dove into guys that could get traded. Talk about a guy like Brandon Ayuk. I mean, is he gonna get moved out of the fold in San Francisco? Yeah. And who's he end up with? Because wherever he ends up, that dude in in a, in the right situation, he could be a one. I mean, he is a one. Yeah. So there's so many avenues, but I want to run through. We've been kind of just rambling. I want to run through these, the picks in order, and just talk about some position of needs you guys think, or if a name pops off for you that you believe is a good fit for that team, or if you deem that to be a team that'll trade out, trade up. Let's discuss it. But obviously, I think we can move on from Chicago. Chicago selects Caleb Williams. Obvious. We all know it's it's bound to happen. Every network understands it. Now we get into the fun. Washington Commanders at two. Carter, you said Daniels. Gannon, you agree with that? Yeah, I think Jaden Daniels is the guy there. I, th I think at the end of the day, there's still a slim possibility. I think Drake May slides in there. But if I'm picking a two-pick, then I'm going Jaden Daniels. I just All feel right. like Drake May, in a sense, is like a Sam Howell. I think Sam did similar, decent. Similar. Similar. Not saying they're a side-by-side -side comparison, but I just think Washington goes after a guy like like Daniels because it's 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 a different I mean Howell's a pocket passer and Jaden Daniel can get out and move as we as we saw last year so that's Maybe where I too think much. I think that's, so too I think it worries me a little bit I don't I, know if I, he does. Hold up. I think that momentum with Jaden Daniels Heisman season more of the proven results I, I don't think this is necessarily maybe the best pick out of it because you talk to more of the NFL people more people ins and outs watching stuff they like Drake May a lot on this stuff, but it just it, the record wasn't there, the production wasn't there. I'm not saying to get caught up in that because you've seen different people over their college careers. It doesn't matter once they come into it. Because tools wise, there's a lot of people that think Drake May is almost off the charts, even better than Hill Williams on some things. But I think Jaden Daniels with the momentum of winning, I, I just don't know durability wise. The thing that scares me with Daniels, the injury history, played a lot of snaps in college football already. How much more are you going to get kind of in that ceiling range? But I, I'm still thinking Jaden Daniels there too. Yeah, and I think it's the wrong pick before we move on, I think. That's I what think. I said. That's why I don't think it's the right pick, but I think Jane Daniels is going to be the guy. 
Yeah. All right. So at New England at three, that means we're going Drake May at three, right? To New England, or are we taking yeah. Harrison? I think because if, if we take May. okay, because if we take Harrison here, that's where Minnesota calls up. Minnesota. I think calls Minnesota up. is gonna. I think Minnesota is going to get McCarthy. I I, I believe that's the that fit top too. five pick. I think they can but, trade up. Yeah, they can. But having those two first rounders, they got the ammo right there if they want to go yeah, up. High, yeah. And if New England. If New England says, we want to take Harrison, Arizona's sitting at four, Los Angeles at five, your next quarterback needy team is New York Giants possibly at six. So then you're talking, does Minnesota want to make the jump from 11, 11 to five, 11 to six, trade up with one of those teams? And, I mean, unless Arizona shocks people and takes a quarterback, I think Arizona's the situation where Marvin Harrison ends up. I think you, the Chargers – the Chargers are another possibility, but I think I think if the I think the three options for the Chargers. So we've talked Arizona. I mean, Chargers. I don't know. I think it's a doomsday or neighbors. I think it's neighbors. I, I just think the top four picks are going to be quarterbacks. I think one through four. Okay. I know, and I've just seen a lot with Arizona trading out that four pick, but I still don't also them see passing a Marvin Harrison there at four. Yes, like, I don't I, think I, they will. Yeah, like, I don't think they will. Ah. So but I could also May, see him dropping down even three, four slots and still knowing that they're going to get one of those three big wideouts and having somebody slide up there to get their quarterback like Minnesota, who's star for a quarterback. But I could see him doing that and falling down in the late teen or the late tens pick there. All right. So let's go with we're sitting at Bears, Williams, Commanders, Daniels, Patriots, go with May, Cardinals, go with Harrison. And then we're sitting at five. If we're the Chargers, I think this is where they trade out. I think this is where Minnesota comes up, and I think Minnesota takes McCarthy here. Just to jump and be sure that the Giants don't go quarterback. Because the Giants could get greedy a little bit sitting at six and say, okay, McCarthy's on the board. We don't feel like we need to wait this out and and trade that pick with Los Angeles to Minnesota. I think it could go either way here. Obviously, Minnesota could wait it. but New York's in the market for – who says they don't take a neighbors or a Rome right there? Yeah. No, and, yeah. And that's part of me too, because they've already invested the capital with Daniel Jones and they keep saying that he's their guy regardless of the stuff. So if you really believe that and feel in house that he can do that and maybe get a guy later on, another quarterback to kind of give him some competition there, then you go get a neighbors or a doomsday there with a big time weapon. Then you don't trade out. And I think that's a little bit more if Drake may does go three and then there's only JJ there. Cause if there's Drake may and JJ there, I think that, entices the Giants a little bit more but if Daniel Jones is that guy with that money committed which would make sense as a as a business decision I'm not saying talent wise for the Giants at the end of the day but like Carter said there's weapons there and they have nothing on offense they have nothing on offense to go with Daniel Jones absolutely so. nothing and that's the thing but uh, do they believe in it to believe in him anymore are they willing to just ride out this contract and lose football games and get higher picks these next few years like we might be in for a little rebuild with New York here in the next couple of years. Like they might tear it down. They they realize they paid the wrong guy and, and gave Daniel Jones that much money. I mean, you invest in him like that. The only reason you can sit him is if you you draft your young guy. Daniel Daniels gets hurt or he is underperforming, and then your rookie could slot in. But outside of that, I mean, it's interesting in New York. It's mm-hmm. I mean, very they they have an opportunity, like you said, to go receiver as well. And then you're like, what are you really doing? Are you are you building around Daniel Jones now? Well, that, like, yeah, because this is the decision. This is such a pivotal crossroad, I think, for the Giants organization here. Because are you going to go full deep, go dive in deep in the deep end with Daniel Jones and say, yeah, we're eating this money and we're going to keep building around yeah. it? It's a big what if. Or then do you really tear it down and lose even more but have a franchise quarterback there? And I think it's a weird animal there. What's six? Mm-hmm. And again, it's some of these decisions that these uh, teams and organizations have multiple things on the table until the draft night, until those first really top three picks are made. I don't think they know either. No, it is. It's definitely how the board shakes out for a good majority of these teams. Like, like, are we going to get a run on O-linemen early? And are we going to have teams I, I, trading up? I just don't up? see like, a way that New England doesn't go quarterback at three. I know we're backtracking where our picks were. I, I think I just, Tennessee, there's no question that they take an, all, an O-lineman. And, and I think they the take thing, a but guy then, Or like, do, they say, do they say, screw that, and people want a wide receiver, and they trade out of there? 
Because I think Tennessee well, could be another uh, thing that could be traded out because you see that on everybody's uh-huh. mocks. There's a lot of people yeah. moving down there because you can get a tackle then in the teens if you get flipped out of there and help their draft cap. I, I don't th- well, That's it, a situation with Tennessee at seven. It's like you're right, though. They could be a team that trades out very easily because the old linemen are probably still going to be there if you move into the teens. You could find a tackle. You could find someone. But, but, but then you have Calvin Ridley and D Hop. So then, where are you going to go with another? I mean, both. I mean, you you got Ridley a little bit longer than you'll probably have D Hop. No, one hundred percent. So then, do you try and bring in a young wide out there and don't move out of seven if one of those guys falls to you? If there's the three quarterbacks that go ahead, that's the thing because Tennessee's building. Like they are putting their yes. chips on the table. I, that's why I just feel like if you had to bet one team out of that top ten to move down. I'm betting the house on Tennessee right now. How do you, they can how still do you get build a, a team though? When you build your a offensive team, line, you start, your offensive line. You start inside and go out. Am I might biased because he's an ND guy? Maybe. No, no, no I'm not saying that's a bad pick, but if you can get value and slide down yeah. in the first round and yeah. still get a good tackle and improve your draft capital, that's why I'm saying I just see them being a good fit. I see in those top 10 teams. If you're trying to build your team around a quarterback, though, I do get your point, Budens. And if you, I think it all comes down to. How do they view Alt versus the other guys? Yeah, How do they view yeah. the tackles? Because there's some teams that may have a tackle higher than Alt. I highly doubt it. I think Alt's your number one yeah. easily. I mean, but, you could throw in the guy from Penn State, I think, is the other one. Yeah, uh, that's what I'm saying. If they Sean like their who, grades on their other top mm-hmm. three or four guys and they say screw it and they get a good value with that seventh pick, I don't see why you don't trade out of that. Yeah, mm-hmm. no, there's quite a few offensive linemen. They'd be they'd be able to to address it if they move into the teens. They would because there's mm-hmm. there's a chance that the run on run on old linemen goes early. There's a chance it sits for a little bit. But there's there's studs. Oh, there's stud old linemen in this draft. Like how you mm-hmm. feeling? Obviously, with the Cowboys in the last four to five years, they've been a little bit higher. I think with some of their drafts because they've absolutely nailed it with their this first one, round picks. This this year, this, I this is this is a different is a little, story. A little higher. But I'm just saying back with the Micah Parsons and C.D. Lamb, like yeah, you guys yeah. have found generational talent in the draft these last four yeah. or five years. So that's going to make you feel good a little bit as a Cowboys fan. What's some of your feels and some of your needs that you kind of see in that late, mid to late, call it late first round? Yeah, no, I'll answer this, and then I want to get back into that, round out that top ten, I think, um, as far as the draft goes with the top ten. But for me with Dallas, yeah, like my confidence is always pretty sky high when it comes to the draft. Like, I mean, I would say this offseason is probably the most down I've ever been as a fan as far as, like, team building approach goes and overall the way you treat your players and paying those players and just, I mean, your generational talent. You talk about getting a guy like CD, getting a guy like Micah. Well, now they're talking about, you know, bashing those players' names and not wanting to pay them and just give them, give them the money they're worth, right? Uh, but when it comes to the first round for Dallas, I think no question this is a draft for you. Overall, this is a draft where Dallas has to draft for need, which sucks. I hate when you head into a draft and you have to draft for need, especially when you're a team coming off three 12 win seasons with no playoff success. You shouldn't have a lot of holes on your roster, right? Like it, it, you think three straight seasons of 12 wins, you'd expect to be able to head into a draft. And if there's the best receiver available there at 24, you say, guess what? I'm taking a Brian Thomas Jr. from yeah. LSU. <laughs> I think but Dallas you can't. always takes. At least the last couple drafts, they always take just best available on the board. They do, but they they can't this year. They can't. And, and and dude, because they failed to address so many needs. We got holes at center. We got holes at tackle, letting Tyron go. The O line is the worst it's been in a long time. Not only that, but it was bad last year. The running scheme overall, our O line, granted, Pollard coming off the injury and everything. But for me, when I look at this selection with Dallas at 24, it has to be O line. If you want to do this the right way, you have to attack O line. You're going to have to use a second or third round draft capital, maybe a fourth if you get lucky on a running back prospect as well. But when I look at a couple options, uh, I think two guys that stick out to me uh, when it comes to 24 Graham Barton, uh, O lineman, Jordan Morgan, O lineman. Uh, there's another name that's been thrown out. I think, I believe his name is Kingsley. Uh, is his first name, I believe. He's another uh, a later round guy who they believe would be a reach if Dallas took took him uh, at twenty four. But Dallas is known to do that, right? So if you, if they find an offensive lineman that they're like, that's that's our guy. Like we have to have him, and they think, well, if we don't take him now, he's going to be gone by the time we pick come fifty six. Then they'll reach for him, and, and I believe that's what everyone thought about Tyler Smith, right? 
O lineman from Tulsa. How many people had really heard his name in the first round conversation leading up to the draft? And come draft night, his name is spiking everywhere. Dallas takes him, and he's an all pro, all pro left guard right now. And did Dallas hit on that pick? Hell yes. Did I think they hit on it at the time? Nope. Nope. You couldn't convince me they hit on it. Granted, because I'm so used to when it comes to these drafts, like a CD Lamb, a Micah Parsons, we take dogs. We take dogs. Everyone knows their names. And when you take a guy like Tyler Smith, I envision it to be a draft similar to what that was like um, as far as big names being taken. I really think it's going to be an O-lineman in the first round. Uh, those two names I mentioned are possibilities. The, the third name, I think, realistically right now, is probably your best possibility, just knowing because it's Dallas. Um, what do you guys at, do at, at running back? So at running back, I mean, we brought in Royce Freeman. Roy, Royce Freeman's our <laughs> – our, uh, He's our RB1 or RB3, whatever you want to call him, because Deuce Vaughn's there, uh, Rico Dowdle's back. So I honestly – I see, here's where Dallas could really mess things up. If if they take an O-line in round one, I'll be ecstatic if I, if I believe it's the right guy. But if they fail to address the running back position at all in this draft, one, I'll be shocked. But two, it's the worst decision they could ever make because you're – you're building your offensive line back up, but you're gonna Dak's gonna throw the ball fifty times a game with this running back committee he's got right now. I mean who's, who's some running backs that you like in the middle rounds? Yeah, no, a couple running backs I would I mean Jonathan Brooks is number yeah. one. And I believe Jonathan Brooks is the guy who like I when you ever when you when you look at some prospects and and you you watch them play and, and what they did in college and injuries, all of it is factored in. Uh, before the Cowboys draft, back when Jalen Smith was taken by Dallas, the injury, everything, he slid. It's a Dallas Cowboys pick, right? Jonathan Brooks, the injury. Guess who did his surgery? The Cowboys doctors. He's a Texas guy. The Cowboys are familiar with him. If they take him, realistically, if Brooks never got hurt, he's probably your number one running back prospect heading into this draft. Um, obviously, the injury concern scares me a little bit because you're bringing in a guy like Brooks coming off injury who probably will be ready to go right away, OTAs. But <laughs> he's your RB1 and with injury history. So that's scary. But a, a couple other guys that I like, Braylon Allen out of Wisconsin, I think will be a great addition if he's on board with Dallas. Um, who can I, Who else can I name? Trey Benson from Florida State, I think is a home run pick if you take him. Uh, Jalen Wright out of Tennessee, another home run pick. I don't think Dallas can really go wrong when it comes to picking a running back as long as they do it in the second, third, or fourth. Yeah, It just has to be done early. If they don't address it, then that's where things are going to get a little scary. And honestly, I'll probably be happy with that with whatever back it is. Um, there's another Memphis running back. Tony Pollard went. Like, There's backs in this draft that can fit what Dallas needs. But they got to fix that old line first, and I think they can do that by taking either a tackle in round one. Uh, you, they've t- there's been talks about Jackson Powers Johnson from uh, from Oregon, the center. He's tough. I mean, he's been sliding down a couple boards due to just durability and his overall physical standpoint at this stage in his career. He's played a lot of football, a lot of wear and tear. Um, he's another option. I've talked uh, When I mentioned Barton, he's got flexibility. He can play multiple positions if he has to, where you put him. Obviously, I don't know. A lot of people think Jordan Morgan from Arizona could play guard. That's another interesting pick because he's got the flexibility there as well. Uh, and I'm interested to see because if we go tackle, then your guy, Tyler Smith, is, is sitting at left guard, and that's where I want him to stay. Like we talk about continuity on the offensive line. Like, Carter, you mentioned right away, like this is where you build your team. You build your team up front, and you do it from the inside out. And another key factor in that when it comes to building an O-line is, one, building it through the draft, but two, having that continuity that goes with that offensive line where they gel and they get to work together for multiple games, multiple seasons. Like That's why Dallas has been so successful because they draft well at the position, but then those players are there for 10-plus years. Zach Martin, Tyron Smith, Travis Frederick, like even a guy like Doug Free from NIU. Mm-hmm. Like, like those players, when they, when they get slot in, if they're not injured, they're playing, and that's the continuity aspect of it sticking at those positions. Uh, so I think 
if we attack it, O line, running back, we need the center, we need the tackle, we need a linebacker probably pretty early to pair with Kendricks, who was an underrated signing, obviously the only signing we made. But there's a lot of a lot of avenues Dallas could go with this in regards to how they how they approach it in in terms of do they go O line first? Do they surprise people and go corner? Do they surprise people and draft the edge earlier than expected? Do they not address running back right away? Do they wait it out and end up uh, hurting themselves and looking back on it and being like, wow, we should have took it back earlier? There's so many different avenues this could go, but I'm just hoping in round one I feel good about the linemen that we landed, uh, and it provides some sort of clarity for the way they're moving forward. I think that's all I want as far as Dallas goes right now is a little bit of clarity. But what are you expecting, Gannon, as far as like your guys' pick? Yeah, I mean, I think it's in the um, category where we need DB help, a linebacker help. I, I don't think really for that pick it, it breathes a whole lot for the linebackers. I think that's more of our middle-round picks. I, I like some of the new scheme stuff that I've been reading out from some of the workouts already with Jeff Halfley, our new D.C., kind of a guy coming over from Boston College, which I think is going to be some good stuff. I, I'm looking. I think, you know, Mitchell's going to be off the board. I think DeGene's going to be off the board. It's going to be kind of the Kool Aid McKinstry kind of category yeah. here. I think with the, I think it would be a really good pit. Another good Bama guy. I think to kind of get in there and get a little noise. Wiggins is going to be another guy. You know, those are four DBs right there. If we can get one of those four, I think it would be awesome. My guy's Cooper DeGene. I was really hoping. You know, personally, the workout didn't go as well for him, but it did in Iowa. I think that's a guy that I could see getting up in that top 20 picks. It's a freak athlete there, but that's just a side of Iowa note. It's interesting to see because I kind of sit back and kind of let Goot do his thing with the Packers the last four to five years that they found a lot of real good hidden gems. I think they got two thirds and two seconds this year. So I'm thinking um, they might kind of move up from that 41st pick, I think, right now that they got from the Jets. With conversation for Aaron Rodgers, I'd like to see a pick. They moved up and got Christian Watson a couple of years ago. So I could see somebody in that early second round kind of making some hay there. Not really wasting too much capital, but with the first round, you're going to need defensive help. The offense is pretty much set on the position groups that way. But we get somebody in the secondary. Or I've seen some linemen help. There's been some different types of guys that I've seen in that aspect. Like Tyler Guyton, I think, is a guy that's been some names thrown around. Another tackle mm -hmm. that way from Oklahoma. You can never go wrong. Like we've hit the nail on the head here with the lineman help. I think another good lineman to kind of go with Jay Love and get that way. But that's really the only early offensive side of the ball of things that way. It's got to be a DB and one of those groups and anybody in that area I'm really set on because I think with that kind of going forward, you're going to need some more help to kind of pair with um, Jair if you can get another corner on that aspect. It, it would be good on that side. I do think Green Bay is also in a position where they can – like like you talk about the corner help, but sitting where they do in the first round and having those seconds, those third yeah. third round picks there. They can go get DeGene. The, the DeGene, but they're also in a position where they can take best available too. No, 100%. Like they 100%. are. They are in a position. Will they do it? I highly doubt it because they are more of a disciplined drafting type team. Well, we always draft needs. Like That's yeah. been Goo's biggest thing. And to, you know, today it's worked out so far. Yeah, you know who I'm most interested in? This is a player that like, Obviously, everyone knows the name, but I'm most interested to see where he lands is Brock Bowers, yeah, tight end from Georgia. Where is Brock Bowers going to end up? Because wherever he goes, I mean, he's a foundational piece for that for that roster. Like people, people are calling him the next Gronk, the the Travis Kelsey. All, like all the comparisons are there, and the dude moves like a wide receiver. Like there's so much talent there. My ideal landing spot for Bowers, which I think would be crazy, is Cincinnati. I mean, uh, you yeah. put him. You put yeah. him with Joe Burrow, yeah. dude. Like that's I just, scary. Yeah, I was just saying that to a buddy. <laughs> Especially if T. Like... Higgins is still there. Like, if Higgins is there with Jamar, a healthy Burrow, and then you got Bowers. I mean, I don't know how you cover that. I don't know how you cover it. Think I of Bowers I don't know if in that far. New York with Rodgers being back and presumably being healthy. Yeah, I don't I mean, think I that would be a bad spot for Bowers to go either. I mean, I'll double down on my Tennessee being the team to trade out the top 10 picks. I think they could get out of there and get a weapon there to allow us to grow with another guy with their offense if they trade out of that pick. Yeah. But ah, I don't know. But, yeah, Brock Bowers is a very interesting guy, man. There's a lot of comps. There's been a lot of people moving their names up, and you kind of hear his name kind of floating around. It'll be interesting to see if he's a top 15 guy or not, in my opinion. All it, right, we kind of got we got a little sidetrack. Yeah, track. we got we to finish top 10. We talk about – so we've, we've done our top – let's just – 
to reiterate it, Bears, Williams, Commanders, Daniels, Patriots, May, Harrison, four, took the Cardinals. Who did we go with? Chargers, five. Did we I mean, trade that's out? We were talking about a trade. Yeah, I just – Trade it, out. There's going to be a trade five through seven. I just don't know which team yeah, it is. Yeah, you don't know what team it's going to be. It more than likely will be Chargers at five, Tennessee at seven, possibly Atlanta at eight. But So we traded out Los Angeles to Minnesota. Minnesota moves up from 11 to five. They take McCarthy. Six, the New York Giants. Is that kind of where we left off? Yeah, or did we, that's, did we, what, yeah that's when we were talking about the Daniel Jones talk, like which way did they off. go. I think – we said neighbors there, possibly. And then right. I think the Titans was up in the air. I think they're going to take all, but they could okay. realistically, they could trade that and get a guy. Yeah. You know. right. I just Let's don't take... know what the Giants are doing, man. The Giants are an interesting team. Like, like we said, it's, it goes either way. Do you build around the guy you don't want to be your QB anymore? Or do you draft a quarterback? If one's available, which I don't know, because a team like Minnesota wants to come up, like it's yeah. well known, Minnesota wants to yeah. come up. I think so, you, I think you well, they I don't have think to you, come up. They have to. You, adjust. you keep Daniel Jones. Okay. I, so we're taking I neighbors. You, if, I, if we, I had to lean on a decision, yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if I had to bet on a decision, they're taking. Because once a number one pick, I mean, it's going to be a, it's going to be a, um, why am I blanking on his name? The dude from Carolina, quarterback Bryce. Bryce Young. Yeah, Bryce, Bryce Young. Be a Bryce Young situation at New. I mean, they have nothing at New York. Yeah. Yeah. You, do you build around that, and you just the first couple of years you just well, suck? And they're gonna Maybe. lose the tight end too, Darren Waller, yeah. who's there yeah. for years, is gonna retire. I think. And, I think you get neighbors. I think you get a receiver there. Um, I, I, yeah, I don't think you can. I don't think if if McCarthy's gone. And they don't want to go quarterback. I think there's no way you can pass on neighbors. Mm-hmm. I don't think you can. Okay, seven Tennessee. Carter all, says all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, number eight Atlanta. I think this is where Atlanta stacked up on receivers right in in the off season. Mm-hmm. They brought in Kirk Cousins. I think this is where a guy like Dallas Turner could go. I think he yeah. fits Atlanta. I think I think he's an overall prospect. Where you look at him and he could be instant impact, very successful. Uh, coming into a situation uh, with Atlanta where they're they're going to be ready to win. Like, yeah. this is a team looking ready to win. So adding an instant impact type guy for that defense there is, is very important. And that's – Atlanta hired – was it Raheem Morris? Yeah. <laughs> Raheem Morris, so another defensive-minded coach. So bringing in a guy like Dallas Turner, instant impact. They already – they've built the offense. Now you add another piece to that defense. I think it's a home run pick if they do go a guy like Turner. So we, we've already talked about this pick at nine with Chicago. Now, what do you want to do here? Are we going to are we gonna sit and pick? Are we going to trade? I mean, now we have to trade back or, or pick because we haven't traded. So we're sitting at nine. Are we trading out? And who wants to even come up at this point? I don't, Minnesota, is I this, could see them trading, but I could also – I mean – a smart yeah, pick, I dude, think. If, for you, the Bears. if you're just waiting there at nine with a doomsday in your lap, like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, we didn't move up. We're sitting and picking, or we trade back. If we trade back, we're probably going, Man, probably going. If that's me right there, you're taking a doomsday o- with o- more. Tackle. I think Keenan we go. Allen. I think we got to go with Doomsday. Dude, here, right? uh, Doomsday, DJ Moore, and Keenan Allen for Kale Williams. Welcome to the league, buddy. Yeah, welcome. And then welcome. have, and then our defense be. See, this is the thing about our defense. It was terrible. Montez Sweat came in. They started playing well. But if you look at who we were playing. Yeah, that's a good point. If you look at who we were playing, though, the defense, I think, looked a lot better than they actually are. I think there's a lot yeah. of holes on our defense still. And it's not sexy, but I think taking the edge rush there would be smart. And getting a guy like a Roman Wilson or – Someone like that, and I pick seventy five. I think they have in yeah, the third yeah, round. You're right. I mean, if there's a good thing there, the mid round receivers, you're gonna you're gonna get plenty of them. I mean, it's, it's you're just gonna tough get plenty of them. I, I do you think need gonna three be... of those guys? I mean, really, do you need all three of them? I mean, you don't, but you kind of do in consideration with the fact that like Keenan Allen's a thirty one year old receiver. And True. Keenan, talk I get talk that. to me talk to me about this though, like. Like we talk about Williams coming into the best the best position possible for a rookie quarterback. 
But here's my thing. It's like if Keenan Allen goes down, who's your wide receiver too? Yeah, Tyler Scott? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah we, we talk I, I about their gotta top go two being nasty. There. I think if you really want a receiver and you don't want to take a Dunze now, what you do is trade out. You could trade out once. And then if you deem that receiver, you think he'll still be there again, trade out again, and then take a Brian Thomas Jr. from LSU. I, I just but, don't know the trade down to get out of that at night. I don't know who's going to be knocking at that door That's the door thing, there. who's coming up. That's the only well, thing. I also think, how do you know that – how do you know – there's a great possibility that all three of those guys, all three of those receivers go before nine. There is. There is. Yeah, but then if the, then if one of those go, then it's going to be one quarterback that gets backed up and somebody comes up there and trades for you, or you're going to get all. And I think of alts there. So, so I, I think really don't take see a scenario. <laughs> so, so, so you're saying that one of those quarterbacks or somebody doesn't go early. That's the only way that, that you really get trade out of there for a high value. And I don't see that happening. I think you're going either alt if somehow and hell he falls. I don't think that falls. But I don't think he falls. I think if he falls, I think you take him. And if they if if they have even thirty seconds off the board, you know. You still got to go. You still got to take a doozy there, like Bryce was saying with the yeah, injury history. Keenan Allen, he's it's scary, you have, dude. You have two guys. You have Keenan Allen being the third, but you have two young studs. And like without Keenan Allen, if he goes down and he's out for for three, four, five games, your receiving core is worse than what Fields had yeah, last year. You want the best foot four, especially with Caleb Williams. I think in his rookie year, you don't want to have as many growing pains as possible. Having yeah. a doozy, and I get that help. though because. If you add a foundational piece at the O line, that helps. That helps Williams as well. Does does the edge really help your rookie quarterback? I think if Poles right now sitting in his office as the GM, he knows he's taking Williams at one. Right? You would think with this minimal amount of picks that he has, it's all about giving Williams more power to be successful. And then why wouldn't you take an O line there? Then I think if an O line if there is one. If I think he's trade out, but nobody's – but my my thing is, like, if you're going to take an O-line, if Alt's already gone, I don't think you're going to reach for an O-line at nine. And in this scenario where we're at one through nine, I don't think they can trade out because I don't know what team wants yeah, to come up Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think they're going to be pigeonholed. Because if they could trade out and get better draft capital and get a defensive guy, an interior rush or a tackle, then yeah. But I just don't see a way that they're going to be – one or being able to get out of that ninth pick. At the end like if the if the quarterbacks fly off the board, like we we in our scenario we have we have all we have, four. Yeah, so we have McCarthy, we had May, we had Daniels, we had Williams. All four of those guys going in the top ten right away. So if they fly off the board, and those obviously guys are, that, might be top five <clears throat> with Marvin Harrison being the other guy. So it takes it takes that trade up uh-huh. ability for other teams. Like they kind of settle down a little bit and realize, okay, we got to pivot from a guy like McCarthy to now we're sitting here talking about where can we get a Michael Penix? Where can we get another quarterback in this class? Can we still find one that has some sort of value that we can mold? Uh, I think a team like the Raiders is another team. When you talk about trade up, like they're going to be yeah. looking at quarterbacks too. And there's they're sitting there. Pick with him and Jay and Daniels, but well, that's a lot of capital to come up boy. So the Raiders are sitting at 13. Yeah. They're not going to, I just don't see a way they can get Daniels, but like there's some teams that if they, they feel like McCarthy can be good in the NFL and grow. Um, I think he has all the intangibles, but can he grow and be a starting quarterback in the NFL is is an interesting, and I think it's 50-50 for a lot of people. Is he the guy? I don't know. But the Raiders, the Vikings, those are two teams immediately that stick out to you like they have to come up and get a quarterback. And Minnesota is going to get greedy, and they got the weapon to do it. They got the two first-round picks. They can go up and do it. Especially with that, that second first round pick is is sitting at twenty three. That's not no joke of a first round pick. That's a legitimate. You're getting a legitimate, probably plug and play type guy there at twenty three. Yeah. So, but to round out our top ten, we're sitting at with the New York Jets being the tenth pick. I think they probably. Wouldn't you think they? I mean, the receivers are gone off the board. They don't need a quarterback. Bowers. Realistically, here I. Bowers, you really think Bowers is going to go this early? If they're all in with Rodgers, I mean. If they're all in with Rodgers, I think the smartest move is is a tackle. No, they they need help. I think they're going to go lying there. I think you have to. I think a guy like Fashanu from Penn State, can he go early? Another, I mean, you got J.C. Latham, Amarius Mims. Yeah, Mims, yeah. Barton, Fatanu from Washington. Fioga, sorry if I butcher that name, from Oregon State. Like, there's tackles, there's. There's centers. There's who do they have right now? Conklin. 
at tight end? I don't know if he's yeah, still there. Yeah, but you got to keep Rodgers on the field. You also got to keep Yeah, dude, you got to protect him, especially coming off a year where you invested the, the second-round pick to go get him, the money you're paying him. There's no reason. Like, they brought in Tyron Smith, right? He's their, He's going to be their starting left tackle. So now it's like you're probably looking at a right tackle, probably looking at interior line. So not to name positions, but I think ultimately you still have to get as much protection as you can for Rodgers. Like, I, dude, I saw a mock. <laughs> I don't know who did it, but I saw them. I saw the Bears trade nine going to like 14 or 15 and getting that. Um, Fashanu, the tackle from, Fashanu from Penn State, the line. No, the Bama one. Latham. Uh, Latham? Latham. Yeah. But yeah. then again, you got you got to have some you got to have some shit get spiced up in the first yeah. couple. Like, I, which, I agree with you guys that happen. Yeah, I mean, this realistically, this is probably not going to go at all how we expect it. I mean, I think I think number one. I think we got the names right, obviously, with the top ten. I think majority of the names are going to be right with just some of the order and what the team's <clears throat> trading in. I think there's legitimately probably – I mean, just looking at some names, I think there's seven, six, seven offensive linemen that will have first-round grades that will have the ability to be plug-and-play type guys. And, and that's that's quite a bit. Yeah. And, and in the mid-rounds, too, it doesn't get any uglier. Like, and, and and there's certain guys who aren't necessarily ranked this high, but they're going to go in the first round. Like I mentioned to Jordan Morgan, and on some draft boards, he's he's ranked out of the top 30 as far as – prospect wise goes but offensive linemen just to name a few outside the ones I've already named like Jackson Powers Johnson uh Zach Frazier from West Virginia Jordan Morgan Arizona Tyler Guyton Oklahoma Gannon mentioned uh Kingsley so that's the guy I was talking about Kingsley Sumataya I don't know how to pronounce the name I think that's Dallas's pick I do I think Sumatala. Dallas is gonna take Kingsley Sumatala Sumatala Sumat- Taya. I don't there's no L. I, sorry for butchering oh, your not. name, Kingsley. Sorry, I read it wrong. It's gonna be tough when he puts on a Dallas jersey. I can't pronounce his name, but he's probably the guy. So like that's like talk about Lyman that could go in the first round. So we got that's I, I didn't even name the seven above those guys that are realistically <laughs> all top twenty five prospects. So like the Bears got options. Every team <laughs> has options if they want to go O line. Just a matter of is there gonna be a run on these guys early? Like, or are they going to slip a little bit? Like, there's been talks like, does Fashanu from Penn State slide a little bit? And that's the thing with line, dude. Like, when it comes to offensive line, like I talked about Dallas with Tyler Smith, teams grade these linemen, the majority of them are all different. Like, like when, they, when they're grading their linemen, like, it's all about positional fit, right? So if, if we're looking at a guy like Joe Alt, who plays tackle, Right tackle, left tackle. So then a guy like Fashanu, Penn State, right tackle, left tackle. What fits what that team needs? Do they need a right tackle? Do they need a left tackle? Is is the next best available a right tackle? But the better players, a left tackle? So it's like there's so many things that, that play into that when it comes to if you're drafting for need or if you're drafting to fill a hole. Like when it comes to the Jets, they're putting Tyron Smith at left tackle. Like he's their guy. So if they're going to go all line – you're thinking immediately it has to be a right tackle or it's got to be interior. So left tackle is out of the equation immediately. So with these linemen, I don't think it's necessarily about the way they're ranked versus I think it's more about what fits the overall structure of that offensive line to where they're being drafted. So, yeah, I think, okay, so we round out our top 10, talk Cowboys, talk Bears, talk Packers. I don't have much else. If there's any other, let's let's wrap up with one more thing. Who was your guys? Favorite prospect in this class outside of Caleb Williams? Oh, I mean, my is I already sat him out as Cooper DeJean. I, I think it's an anomaly what he's doing with his athleticism and being a white player at his position. Like, it's just, I'm just going to state that out there. Like, it just doesn't happen with the pure athleticism. He came off a broken foot with his rehab. He had 38 and a half inch broad jump or uh, vertical jump, like 11 and a half broad. Ran a four four forty like it, it's the stuff with his returnability. He's a guy that I've watched firsthand, being an Iowa fan over the years. It, this is a guy that's going to come in and change the organization day one with his cover skills and being able to return it too. I don't know how much he'll do that, being an early pick, but he's my favorite guy. Just being an Iowa dude, 
small town kid in Iowa, hell of an athlete. It's going to be an interesting story here to see where he goes and kind of is a little groundbreaking for him and his positioning with some different types of stuff. Because that athleticism plays is anywhere, anywhere you put him at the end of the day. That's my guy, somebody that I'm looking forward to being an Iowa dude. Yeah. What you rocking with, Carter? All right. I, so I got kind of two guys here. One of them's Peyton Wilson, linebacker from NC State. He's such an interesting prospect because the injury history is there, and if it wasn't there, this is a guy where you're looking at like just overall structure, uh, uh, like the athlete, athletic structure that this guy has and what he possesses on a football field and what he's capable of doing. It's not teachable. Uh, I mean, realistically, he could play safety. He could play linebacker. He can do it all as an LB prospect, and I think he'll be a stud in the NFL if he's on the field. Uh, it's a, kind of a Swiss Army knife to put on your defense. Uh, the speed that he possesses, sideline to sideline, the ability to tackle, the ability to cover. Peyton Wilson has it all if he's on the football field. Probably my favorite prospect in this class who could go in the first round. Realistically, a team will probably take the chance on him just to how good of an athlete he is. Uh, I love his game. I think he will be successful uh, at the next level. I'm trying to find my next guy. Okay, blanked on his name because there's two of them from Texas. But a Donnie Mitchell receiver from texas the other one obviously being who broke the combine shattered the combine xavier worthy uh but adani mitchell i think is going to be a fantastic receiver and i think we get caught up in the mix thinking about these guys like harrison neighbors adunze <clears throat> all of those type of receivers are absolute studs and you don't see them often being guys that are getting drafted that early uh but then there's the guys like <clears throat> who's his name what's his name I'm blanking. Brian Thomas Jr., I've mentioned his name four times and can't remember it. <laughs> Brian Thomas Jr., Jalen Polk, like a Donnie Mitchell, Xavier Worthy, like those guys. Studs. Uh, Lad McConkey from Georgia, Ricky Purcell from Florida, Roman Wilson from Michigan. Those names get caught up in the mix. Keon Coleman from Florida State. Like all those names who are going to go in the second, third. Some will get lucky and get in and slide into the first. There's later round receivers too, but I think a guy like a Donnie Mitchell kind of gets caught up in the mix and could be a could be a guy who, because of how early these receivers are going to go, could be a, a team like Buffalo or Kansas City at the back end of the draft where they trade up and, and take in a Donnie Mitchell. And that's where things will get scary because I'm in love with the prospect of a Donnie Mitchell, what he can do at the next level. I think he'd be a fantastic fit for a contender like Buffalo or Kansas City. I, I really do. I like the – is it Zayn Worthy? Yeah, Xavier Worthy from Texas. I really like him. I mean, I think the way receivers are going now, it's he reminds me kind of like a Zay Flowers type of guy. Um, I quick, think that's kind of twitchy. Just Super so twitchy. fast. So fast. And I think there's so many teams like, could Chicago get him later? I don't think he's going to be there for our – he's definitely going second round. I don't think yeah. there's any way he would go third round. Uh, no, but he's having, a second having a offset, like I've talked about, which is what I like with having a guy like Jefferson and then um, what's the rook? What was the rookie's name? Addison. Jordan Addison. Stuff like yeah. that. I like I like that combo. And then another guy that I don't know where he's gonna land or how good, but as far as watching him in the combine, I was like, he can throw the hell out of the ball. And that's Joe Milt. I think. Yeah. He has a cannon, a cannon, cannon, a absolute cannon. And I mean, I I don't think he's he's probably a top ten quarterback in this draft. Um, I just like the way he threw the ball. I mean, yeah. there you can't you can't do much. That's why I hate watching. I hate the, like the thing with Caleb Williams is, you know, look at his highlights. It's like everyone has good highlights. If you if you're yeah. the top pick, you're gonna have good highlights. Like. It's hard to judge someone in college. And then once we get to the draft, what do we have to base off? We have college and then we have the combine. Like, we mm -hmm. really don't have much else. And there's going to be those guys that slip under the radar that no one knew or they didn't, they didn't perform or they didn't run the fastest, whatever, and they come out of nowhere. But I think Joe Milton, as far as watching at the combine, the dude has an absolute can. And I think, yep. I don't know how he'd pair well with the team i don't know what team but i think 
if he can stay in the pocket and just throw that ball and they, they protect him, obviously with offensive line and, and that type of thing, like a Raiders, I don't know if that would be yeah, a good fit. That's what I'm fit. saying. Like there's, there's those teams out there that they, they, if they don't get their guy, like a Penix or a McCarthy, uh, when they're trade up candidates, like you could be, they could be susceptible to, to kind of having to force their own hand and, and take a guy like Milton in the later rounds and be a project player, uh, especially a team like the Raiders. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's so many guys that are going to have to be project players in order uh, to be successful. But one other name, too, we threw him around here just kind of in the draft order stuff is just where Brock Bowers is going to specifically land up because the plug and play, like his his playmaking type, where that ball is in his hand at Georgia, like it is different. Like the Travis Kelsey, but it's a smaller build, in my opinion. He's more mobile. He's a better athlete, better wide receiver down the field. Like that's somebody that's going to transcend an offense as soon as he gets drafted, like yeah, as soon as he gets in there. It's crazy because I think the poll is going to be a little bit higher for him than some people are thinking in that first round. But that's another guy that's just going to change an offense, especially if they get on with a young quarterback somewhere and kind of get some chemistry there. But every time he was on the field and healthy for Georgia, man, he was a game factor, I mean, just playmaker at the end of the day. So it'll be interesting <clears> to see where he goes. Yeah, I think ultimately, I think they're when it comes to drafting, I think there's your obvious stars, your guys that are plug and play starters. There's your guys who surprise teams and they're better than what we expect. Um, and then there's your project players. Yeah, I think there's kind of three, picks, yeah, your three categories. And typically, once you get past that first round, that second round is where you start to find those guys where you get a little surprised. You start to wonder, is that a reach? Blah, blah, blah. Like a team like last year, Detroit. The, the, the combination of picks they made early in the first round, everyone thought that was a reach. Yeah, and Gibbs' those were, grade was barely first round on some people's boards. Yeah, like those, the two first round picks they made, being Laporta and Gibbs, were transcending players in their playoff run this year. Like, there's potential for that to happen, and people will be surprised. People will be mad at picks, but the way it falls, and it's a beautiful thing to see uh, when come the season, and you start to watch those players flourish or or become uh, what we expect them to become, but. Ultimately, I don't have anything else. I'm excited. Uh, we got another episode coming as far as draft preview goes uh, with the Real Talk pod, King Capers, Terrence Parsons Jr. We're excited for that. Kind of get to get to know more about their podcast, but also shift into some more draft talk, some more off-season talk. Um, very excited come this Thursday. It's going to be fireworks. There's going to be trades. There's going to be slide-ups, move-downs. Teams are going are gonna to be making some moves, so I'm excited. I hope you guys enjoyed this one, and we will see you next time.